Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with if you have an egg.com and today is Sunday, February the 21st. And I have exciting news, but I've got to wait until some of you all are here. So I'm just going to make sure that I am with you on Facebook so that I can see all of your lovely, lovely comments. Let me get caught up to you here. Um, but hello, and if you're watching this later on YouTube, it's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. If you don't wanna see all the highs and hellos, just go on over. I actually had somebody complain this week. So yeah, actually I had two people complain this week um, that were, that said that they did not know why we were doing all the highs and hellos and thought we should just get on with it. So. Anyway, they will not be coming into our group. And hello, Marlene. I'm going to see that a few of you all are here. So I do have exciting news. Some of you all have already heard the news, um, but I'm going to wait and tell everybody at the same time. Hello, Elaine. Um, but we do like to say hi and hello. And if you are brand new with us, please let us know because we would love to welcome you. We love to welcome new people. Hello, Sandy from Northeastern Kansas. Um, and you egglets like to talk to each other. Hello, Carol Lou. Hello, Sandra from Dingman's Ferry. Um, yeah, so hi and welcome. Again, I am Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, February the 21st and Rosie's already saying congratulations. Yeah, so she's blowing the news. Just kidding. I'm just kidding, Rosie. It's okay. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Susan. Let's see. Hello, Marlene from Largo, Florida. Hello, uh, John from home base. Okay, so John also just blew the news. He didn't blow the news, but he said hello from Papaw 2. That means Papaw times 2. Wait, hello, Mary Ann from Pennsylvania. Yes, hello, Rosie. Hello, Deborah. And yes, it is cold. So the good news is, there's always good news, but the great news is, the awesome new news is, um, hello, Michelle, and hello, Sherry. But the great news is that John and I are going to be grandparents again. Um, hello, Sherry from Connecticut. And thank you, Michelle. Um, but we're going to be grandparents again. So Alyssa is, I mean, her name's Alyssa, but John calls her Peanut. And thank you, Sandra. John calls her Peanut. Um, so he wants to call this one pistachio, whatever it is, if it's a boy or a girl. Anyway, he wants to call this one pistachio. I'm okay with that. And everybody, Lisa is new. So everybody welcome Lisa and you'll have to fill her in. Oh, and Deborah is brand new. Awesome. Yeah. So y'all welcome Lisa and Deborah and fill them in on why we were talking about grandbabies instead of talking about food and why are we, why we are talking to husbands who are home instead of here. Anyway, so they're brand new. So they don't know what we are talking about. Okay, for new people, and hello, Linda from snowy Rock Island, Illinois. Hello, my Christy. My Christy, did you hear the news yet? Yeah, so John and I are going to be grandparents again. Number two. Yep, yep, Christy already heard. Okay, so yes, another baby. Hello, Sylvia. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, of course, we're not having the baby, but we literally, and hello, Lisa, we literally, literally just put the pack and play up from Alyssa and turned the upstairs of our loft into a room um, a, a playroom for Alyssa. Hello, Lynn. We just did that. I mean, it's not been two weeks. It has not been two weeks. And Casey has spent a lot of time. Thank you, Elaine. Casey has spent a lot of time um, cleaning out clothes and things like that. So just going to say, if it's another girl, we're going to have to unpack everything that we just packed up. If it's a little boy, we'll be looking for donations because there are no little boys in our family. Ethan was the last little boy and he is now 16. Yeah, so there are no little boy clothes in our family. But anyway, so hello to everyone and hello to our newcomers. And again, if you are, hello Trish, if you are new to the group, please let us know. Please, please, please let us know um, because we would love to welcome you. But to everyone else, hi and hello. And why is Sandy saying, oops, what did I miss? Hold on. Hold on. I missed something. I don't know. I missed it. I'll catch up to it later. Um, but anyway, so new people, welcome, welcome, um, everybody else. Good news again. Yeah, so I have even more things to get distra distracted by. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so, oh, let's see. Betty was stuck at work for a week. Oh, my goodness. Betty was stuck at work for a week because of the weather. I'm so sorry, Betty. And hello, Vicky from St. Louis. Um, yep, hello, Billy. So hello, hello, hello. So in new people. Let us know because we would love to welcome you. Hello, Sandy. So we are not like the crabby people from the other group who complained about us saying hi and hello. And I just, I can't imagine. I don't know. I just can't imagine not saying hello to you all. Aloha, Kathy. I mean, if y'all were here, like, I'm just dying to hug somebody. Of course, I'm going to say hello to everyone. Okay, but, so I digress. I'm going to quit complaining about that. We're just going to rejoice in the fact that it is chat number 212, 212. And hello, Haley. Um, and thank you. Um, we are going to rejoice in, um, in that and just let all those negative Nellies, you know, go on. 
Christy, okay, my Christy just said she was snowed in on a scrapbooking retreat. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not even close to being the same. Yeah, not even close to being the same, my Christy, and I'm super jealous. And Lisa has lots of boy stuff. Ooh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, and Deborah wants to know what is the egg thing. So if somebody wants to briefly explain that to her, Deborah, you can also go to ifyouhaveanegg.com and go to the About Us section. Hello, Tag, and it will explain everything. So there just isn't time to explain it and get all of our chat done. So if you are brand new um, tonight, we do the first half, the first 30 minutes. Yeah, we're going to be here for an hour. So new people... I hope you already went to the bathroom. I hope you got a snack, a snack, not a treat. I hope you got a snack. And if you don't know the difference between a snack and a treat, you need to watch from two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think, maybe last week. Um, and in the second 30 minutes, we usually do something fun. And tonight we are gonna be making a little bit of food. So you're gonna wanna hang out for that. Hello, Bernice from Northeast Texas. Oh, I hope te Texas, I hope you're doing well. And hello, Carol from Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Um, but we are going to be doing just a little bit of cooking. And thank you for sharing that, Christy. We're going to be doing a little bit of cooking tonight. Cooking, you know, it's light cooking. So don't panic. If you're not really a cook, don't worry. I'm not either. We're just going to be making some fun stuff to eat. So first half is, is you have to sit and listen to your lecture and do your homework. Second half is the fun stuff. Um, if you are new and you didn't know this, you can also go back and watch the other 211 chats. Yes, there's been there has been 211 other chats before this one, plus... 60 something other videos. I think we're up to 280 something videos now on YouTube. So new people, or if you just need a refresher, you can go back and watch all of those on YouTube. It's just youtube.com search if you have an egg and you can just let that playlist run. Just let it go and just listen to it. Um, and if you're driving, you can just listen to it while you're driving. Okay. So new people say hello. Let us know that you are new. We would love to welcome you. Everyone else, if you are in Texas, and yes, please subscribe. My Christy just reminded everyone to please subscribe on YouTube. Please, 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 please. Especially now since we're gonna have more mouths to feed. More mouths to feed. So yeah, since uh, Casey is gonna have pistachio, hopefully in October of this year, then we are gonna have more mouths to feed. So please, please, please go and subscribe. And yes, Christy is exactly right. We do have a chat for that. We do have a chat for the story behind the egg. Okay, so. See, I already got distracted. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just circle back around here. Um, if you are new, you can go back and watch those on YouTube. Yes, please subscribe. Also, if you are new and if you did not know this, um, if you are a current WW member, um, you can actually go um, to, you can you can go on Connect and you can find, oh, wait a minute. Uh, we have somebody. Oh, Lisa from Maine. Hello, Lisa from Maine. What part of Maine? I've probably asked you this before. And hello, Loretta. Maine is one of our very favorite places to um, vacation besides Disney. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, if you go to Connect and if you go to the West Knoxville group and find the West Knoxville group, you can join us on Sundays at 2.30 um, in the West Knoxville group. And Gwen is an awesome and amazing um, mentor and leader and friend, and I promise you will love her. But at today's 2.30 meeting, I did see, and if I missed anybody, I am so sorry, but I did see Gwen, Linda, Barbara, Myrna, and Myrna, you, honey, you are looking fabulous. So if you are here, you are looking fabulous, and I love your hair. Um, Mer let's see, Myrna, Kathy, Sandy, Stephanie, Christine, Sherry, Donna, Karen, Lynn, another Donna, Colby, Susan, John L., Jackie, and Jackie, had on a fabulous UT pullover. So way to go, Jackie, go balls. And I loved your pullover. And let's see, uh, Sandy with a Y, we had Sandy with an I, Morgan, Ann, Janet, Sylvia, Judy, Trish, Kristen, Mary Lynn, and Laura. So I think I got everybody. Um, I wanted to give you just a little bit of WW news for the last Sunday in February. I just wanted to give you a little bit of news um, before we went on um, to the rest of our topic. Um, did you know, we found out today, or I found out today, this was new for me, and Gwen um, is not very tech savvy, so I was shocked that she knew this before I did. Did you know that you can track using emojis? So if you didn't know that, we were going to talk about that in the second half. Um, and if you did know that, just act like you didn't know it in the second half. Okay, and also during our 2.30 Zoom meeting today, 
Um, it's for the West Knoxville group. So you can go to that one if you'd like to. You're more than welcome to join us. And we have a great group of ladies that are there. Um, but if you, when we were there today, Sandy from Naperville had a chance to tell us just a little bit about an app that she's been using with her recipes. And she, I mean, she literally only had like 30 seconds to tell us about it. So Sandy, if you are here, I would love to know more about it so that we can share more about that next week. Um, you know, so just let us know. So just let us know, Sandy, if you could tell us just a little bit more about that app, I would love to report back in on that next week. And Linda, um, who is from Middle Tennessee, she was, she was, um, she's all, almost always the co-host with Gwen. She has found a product that I have never seen before. Um, she has found, it's called Healthy Life Keto Bread. And it's not that we're doing keto, but she said it is delicious. She said that it tastes like real bread. She said it's dense like real bread. It's white bread, which she was super excited about. Um, she said it is pricey. I think, I wanna say she said it was like five sixty six. I mean, it was like close to $6 a loaf and it's only like a half of a loaf, but she said it was well worth it. One slice is zero smart points and two slices is one smart point. She seemed pretty tickled about it. So. She found it here, or well, she's in Middle Tennessee. She found it in Middle Tennessee at Kroger, and I think she said um, Walmart also has it. So, you know, you might want to, you know, check that out. And um, East Tennessee is still having our same um, wellness check-in, so you can check that out online. You can go to your Connect and go to West Knoxville um, and find out where the wellness check-ins are for East Tennessee. So that has not changed if you were in good standing. Um, for your um, to be free to have um, to get everything free because you're at lifetime membership if you were in good standing when COVID started back in March then you are waived in East Tennessee through the end of um, June through June 30th so if you're in East Tennessee we are a franchise location so I can't promise that it's like that for everybody but you are waived through the end of June you will have to go to a wellness location though and wait in sometime between June 1st and June 30th um, and we are still doing this month's um, theme. So this month's theme um, is the WW Success Registry. If you haven't heard about that, you need to go back and watch a previous chat um, because we I'm going to talk so much we're going to run out of time. And don't forget that WW is offering a chance to rejoin if you hadn't already. Um, and let's see. Uh, and then the personal news still about the YouTube channel. So if you would go to youtube.com and search if you have an egg. Again, we have over 280 videos there. Those are, have all been done for free. So Casey and I have footed the bill. Actually, John's footed most of the bill. But anyway, Casey and I have footed the bill on all of those. And since we are getting ready to welcome Pistachio in October, we would love it if you would, yeah, help support us. So, okay. The bread. A couple of you all are asking about the bread. The bread was called, and Linda found this. I didn't, I have not seen it yet. So this is the most I can tell you is, let's see, hold on a second. Sylvia says, does that mean you can't go to WSS or if you go, you are not waived through June? Mm, Sylvia, so I don't know about your area. For our area, if you were already at goal before the pandemic started, then you are waived through June. And hello, Barbara. So anyway, Linda found the bread, not me. So I haven't seen it in person. She just showed us a bag of it um, when we were um, when we were having our 2.30 Zoom meeting. But she said it is called Healthy Life Keto. So I've seen the Healthy Life bread. And hello, Cheryl. I've seen the Healthy Life bread before, but she said it is called Healthy Life Keto. Um, and it is zero points for one slice and 1.4 two slices. And she said it's a little expensive, but it was well worth it. Okay, so... Uh, that said, last week was chat number 211, and it was, um, so we were, so last week we were talking about making easy things hard, which I know sounds weird, and Casey kept trying to switch it. She kept trying to switch it for your badge this week and make it, um, hello, Laura, and make it hard, you know, make hard things easy. No, we were trying to make things that were easy hard. So I don't know about you all, but the pandemic has made me lazy in several ways. Um, it's been making me take shortcuts on some things. Um, and I've, yeah, just, it's just been making me lazy about a few things. So, um, the, so we were talking about making easy things hard. Um, so sometimes if you've let things, if you're doing things that are too easy, 
You know, it just becomes a routine, it becomes a habit, um, and it may not even be things that you want to do necessarily, um, but it's just gotten, you know, easy and you get complacent. And so we were, um, so we were, we were talking about, last week we were talking about identifying what that easy thing is. Um, we were talking about how to make it hard, how to make it harder to do that easy thing and then how to get strong so that you are that so that the the easy thing seems boring lazy you know whatever hello sylvia and the hello oh, and alicia's whooping or saying hi to barbara um you know and you're no longer interested and you're getting stronger so your homework last week was hashtag make easy hard which was so hard for casey because she wanted to make it the opposite make hard easy but anyway so it was hashtag make easy hard and you were supposed to either choose one of the everyday power quotes and post it, um, or you could do the three steps that were um, that were above, and show us how that you're how you were making your easy thing hard so that you were less likely to do it. Okay, so I had to pick four this week. So I had chosen three, and then we had a last minute homework entry that I had that I had to post. I just I had to post it. So the first one is Marianne, and Marianne has done her homework twice on YouTube this week. And you know what? I just realized I totally forgot to ask you all if you went to a meeting this week. So before I get too carried away, new people, I get distracted really easy. And hello, Sherry. If you got to sit your little bottom in a chair, so we're just gonna back up. I got so excited about the bread, I skipped over this part. So if you got to sit your bottom in a little chair last week, so if you got to go to an actual workshop, give me a thumbs up and Linda did again. And I think it was Sylvia who gets to go this week and I'm super jealous. So for sure, we are not going to until June, I don't think, here in East Tennessee. But anyway, so thumbs up if you got to sit your bottom in a little chair. Um, or if you attended your Zoom meeting last week, thumbs up. And let's see some hearts if you attended here with us live last week. Or if you, um, if you, watch, if you watch this on replay, you do some hearts. And Billy says we don't have meetings. So we have not had in-person meetings um, since March, I guess, of last year, February, March. Um, but anyway, everybody who either attended an in-person workshop, did your Zoom workshop, or who, um, hey, Rita, Texas is in the house. I think we got several Texas people in the house, and hopefully y'all have power again, I'm hoping. Um, but for everybody who either attended last week, attended virtually last week, watched with us live last week, or watched us on replay last week, and especially those of you who subscribed on YouTube, here are your badges. Here are your Bravo badges for that. So congratulations to everyone. Um, now I can start talking about uh, number two, chat number 211. So last week, your homework um, was hashtag make easy hard. And Marianne has done her homework two weeks in a row over on YouTube. So I'm just going to say Marianne gets an extra Bravo sticker for doing it two weeks in a row on YouTube. So that tells me that Marianne is actually watching on YouTube. Okay. So Marianne over on YouTube just about had me in tears, seriously. So she requoted, she requoted one of the quotes that I gave last week. And it was, a strong woman is able to smile this morning like she wasn't crying last night. Okay, so that one especially hit home um, for Mary Ann because she ha she does cry at night remembering um, remembering and missing her husband that she lost. Um, he's been gone for a few years, but she still cries at night. But, but she said that she gets up smiling the next morning because she is keeping her promise to him that she would take care of herself. So that one was, you know, that was a little, so Marianne, good job. Um, Carol Lou says that cooking has always been kind of her zen, you know, like, whoo, like the, you know, it relaxes her. She actually loves to do it. I know a lot of people don't like to cook, but Carol Lou says that, you know, it's relaxing for her, but her easy is she has been using um, takeout. Hello, Irma. She's been using takeout, carry out, you know, whatever, to, you know, to get her food. And so even though it's a good activity for her, she enjoys cooking. She enjoys doing it. She she has let it become, you know, too easy. So she's like me. She's kind of gotten lazy with it, even though she loves to cook. So what she did is she prowled through her freezer and she found some forgotten frozen turkey and she took it out. Um, added some great ingredients, and she made an amazingly yummy soup that will make getting that delivery hard. So she's not going to want to do it anymore. She's going to want to eat some of that soup. Along that same line, Orlando Debbie had a rotisserie, chick rotisserie chicken that was just chilling in the freezer. Get it? Just chilling in the freezer? Anyway, so it was just chilling in her freezer. So she made eight pints, eight pints of... Um, 
chicken soup. She made it in her pressure cooker, so it can go in her pantry. I thought that was a great idea because I'm like really slim on freezer space, but Debbie did it so that she could actually keep it in her pantry. Great idea, Debbie. And then as she eats it, when she's ready to eat it, she can add rice or she can add rice or noodles or something to it, you know, when it's time to eat it. So there again, she made going out for dinner hard by making it easy to have dinner in because her pantry is stocked. Okay, and then here was the surprise entry at the end because I usually try to keep these to three. So here was the surprise entry at the end and I, ha I had to post this one because it was so awesome. It was so awesome. Um, Katie nailed it this week. I mean, she absolutely nailed it this week. So we were talking about making easy things hard. So you know what she did? She's been doing takeout a lot and carry out and I guess pick up curbside, maybe, you know, stuff like that. So in order to make that hard, so that's, that's easy. You know, she just gets online, gets on her phone, you know, orders it, whatever, you know, gets it, carries it home, takes it out, you know, whatever. So to make that hard, she deleted all those apps from her phone. So all of her carry out, Grubhub, food pickup, whatever curbside, all those apps that were on her phone, Katie deleted them. They're gone. So she decided that, so she decided, you know, once she, once she deleted them, that um, if she was going to treat herself, she was going to have to make it a little harder because she'd have to pick up the phone and call them. Katie, that was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. So that is literally, that is literally the meaning of taking something easy and making it hard so that you don't do it anymore. So that was perfect. So bravo to everyone who did their homework. Um, I hope you got your Bravo badge um, from Casey and she will make us another cool one for this week. Um, okay, so this week, this is chat number 212 and the topic is track like you mean it. And I'm saying track like you mean it. So I want you to do something for me. Raise your little virtual hand if you think tracking makes your journey more successful. So I didn't ask how you track or how often you track or whether or not you do track, but raise your little virtual hand, however you want to do that, if you think tracking makes your journey more successful. So I'll give you all just a couple of minutes to raise your little virtual hands there. And while I'm waiting on you, I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of my water. Yep. Linda's on board. Sandra's on board. I am. I'm on board. Yep. Sherry. Yeah. So got lots of hands going up. Okay. So did you know that 74% of the WW past and present members that are on the, um, that are on the WW success registry, did you know that 74% of those people reported that tracking smart points most of the time or always made a difference, that that definitely made a difference in why they have lost 20 pounds and have kept it off for more than a year. 74% of those people. I'm thinking it's probably pretty important. So tracking, no matter how you do it, it doesn't matter how you do it. And hello, Orlando Debbie, but tracking, no matter how you do it, is popularly recognized as a key ingredient to success in many areas of our lives. And as we're gonna see next week, um, weight loss is not our only measure of success. Knowing how we got there, when we've done well, when we need to tweak something, um, um, as well as a way to quantify our efforts. And John literally just rolled his eyes because I just said the word quantify. But having a way to quantify our efforts is more about doing it and less about um, how it's done. So it's more about doing it. Um, so, but which method of tracking is right? So there are a million different methods, you know, and you don't have to go, you know, you don't have to spend six hours a day, you know, trying to get every, you know, trying to get everything down. So they're all right. If you're doing it, it's right. doesn't matter how you're doing it. If you're doing it, you're right. So not everyone is the same. Not everybody's going to use the same method or have the same amount of time to do it or use the same tools even, but here are some ideas to get you started. So one thing you can do is to experience track. So I thought this one was a great, this one was a great one um, that we talked about uh, two weeks ago in the 2.30 Zoom meeting, but this one is a great one and I hadn't really thought about doing this, but if you eat 
like let's say you eat the same breakfast every day. So Gwen, our leader Gwen, eats the same, she eats the same thing for breakfast like almost every single day. Or if you eat the same snack every day, or if you have a frequent meal, or if you have a frequent thing that you get like say Wendy's chili or something like that. So if you have something that you already know what the points are, and if you know what that the points are gonna be for that meal, you don't have to go to the trouble of writing everything down. You can just put, you can just literally track breakfast three points. That's it. You know, so that's experience tracking. You had experience with this. You know what the points are. You don't have to put all the details down. Breakfast, three points. Picture tracking. So I know a lot of you all take pictures of your food before you eat it. And sometimes you forbid your husbands from eating until you have taken a picture of the food. Um, so if you don't have time to track what you're eating, just snap a picture of it and go back later because you can go back later and say, oh yeah, that's right. I had green beans and I had the chicken and I had, you know, whatever else. And you can go back later and track from that. The next one is Siri tracking. So if you haven't tried Siri tracking yet, I'm gonna kick you all off of my phone for just a second. So hopefully everyone is here and hopefully I've already told everyone hello. But if you have not tried Siri tracking, you've got to try this. Um, and we have, there is a chat for that to show you how to add things to um, Siri for tracking, but this is all you do. Um, so let's see, which one did I put on here? I think it was, I did it for a test. So let's just test it. Hey Siri, track that man's turkey tenderloin. Ready to do it? So, she pulled it up. So all I said was, hey, tr hey Siri, track that man's turkey tenderloin. She pulled it right up. Yeah, so she pulled it right up. It's an awesome way, if you have an iPhone or if you've got a tablet, it's a great way to save some time on tracking because things that you eat frequently or things that you're most likely to need to track, you can just go ahead and save them to Siri. And the last one is emoji track. So we talked about that just very, very briefly today. Emoji tracking is this. So when you have your app pulled up, go ahead and click on where the search bar, go ahead and click on search. And then on my iPhone, the emojis are down here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on emojis and I'm just gonna pick one. So I'm gonna pick this little movie. I'm gonna pick the little, mo the little thing that looks like a movie reel. And here's what it pulled up. It pulled up movie popcorn without butter, three cups, Orville, Redenba Orville Redenbacher's Classic Bag Movie Theater Butter Popcorn, Kirkland Signature Movie Popcorn, and then it pulled up recipes, Parmesan Herb Popcorn. So it knew. That's so weird. I just touched movies and it pulled them up. Is that not crazy? That was so much fun. So we did that for just a few minutes today during, um, actually just a minute today, during the 2.30 meeting. And that was so much fun, you know, just to kind of look at the, to look at the emojis. So that is your homework for this week. Your homework for this week is hashtag emoji track. And so your homework for this week, again, is hashtag emoji track. This is the easiest one I've ever given you, ever. This is the easiest homework I have ever given, given you. Oh wait, Al Alicia said her Siri is trying to track it to her tracker. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Alicia's Siri. Yeah, she must have wanted to just do whatever I said. Um, but this is literally the easiest homework I've ever given you, ever, and probably the most fun homework, unless it was like a bingo game or something. Um, but I want you to do hashtag emoji track. So I want you to go to your WW app. Okay, and some of you, and thank you, Alicia, for sharing that the um, homework. Some of you have not been on your apps since COVID started. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, some of you have not been on there since all this started. You need to get on your app. So go to your WW app, click in that search bar, put in an emoji, and we wanna see what you get. So it doesn't matter what the emoji is, just try anything, try anything. You don't even have to pick food. Um, and then if you like what you got, if like if you like what it pulled up for the emoji that you chose, go ahead and take a screenshot of it and post it. And if it's funny, we wanna see that one too. So, and yes, girls, it is time for water. So thank you for reminding me of that. But that is your homework. So it's hashtag, um, it is hashtag emoji track. So I want you just to go do that emoji thing and post it because it's gonna be hilarious. I cannot wait to see um, what all it pulls up. I don't even know how many, oh, let's see. My Christy just did it and she did a butterfly and it pulled up butterfly shrimp. How cool is that? How absolutely cool is that? Okay, so since we are segueing into the second half, I am gonna go ahead and put my apron on. Um, we are cooking just a little bit tonight. It's not really, apron worthy cooking, but 
That way Casey knows when it's time for the second half. So when she is posting your videos for you, when she is posting the YouTube, which by the way, the YouTube for this one should be up, um, the two YouTube should be up tomorrow. And then Jessica has a recipe to type with this, so she might not get the recipe up until Tuesday. But the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna have to get some eggs ready. So we're not just making eggs tonight, but we're gonna have to get some eggs ready. So for those of you who don't know how to hard boil an egg, the sec, oh, I forgot to drink my water. Hold please. New people, we stop and drink water at the halfway point because I've been talking nonstop for 31 minutes now and y'all need some water too. So everybody get a drink of water. Ooh, Carol's got an interesting one too. Okay. Whew. So what we're going to need here in a few minutes are some eggs or some hard boiled eggs. So for those of you who don't know how to hard boil an egg, if you're like me and you've had trouble hard boiling eggs, um, I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way. So that's the first part of this. So first, first things first, we're going to hard boil some eggs. I have a Simple Living Products air fryer, whatever brand of air fryer you have, you can do this. And let's see. Oh, okay. Trish wants to know if somebody has an Android and if you can do that to let her know. So all we're going to do is add a couple of eggs. I never do more than four. These are just normal eggs, nothing special about them. It actually works better if they're a little bit older. So these, I've had these eggs for, and okay, I don't mean old, but like older, like you didn't just, just get them. Like they're not freshly harvested from the chicken. Um, it works better if they have a little bit of age on them. So these were a week old from the grocery store. These are brown eggs. Um, nothing, again, nothing special about them. Um, but I usually just do about three or four at a time. And I've just put these in the bottom of my Simple Living Products air fryer basket. The basket is in there, okay? And you don't poke them. For some reason, people always ask me if you poke a hole in them. I don't know why you would poke a hole in them, but you do not poke a hole in them. And don't worry about them rolling around. They're okay. Put it back in your air fry. And remember, scoop. Don't shove it in. And you're going to turn it on 260. 260 for 16 minutes. Okay. While that is going, so while the eggs are going, um, and if you don't know how to make hard boiled eggs in an air fryer, we have a chat for that. Um, and you can just go to youtube.com um, and look it up. Uh, youtube.com, go to if you have an egg and look it up. You can go to if you have an egg.com. Um, that's our blog website. So you can go to if you have an egg.com and um, look it up. Just look up hard boiled and you'll find it. But it is literally the easiest way to hard boiled eggs. So I had never successfully hard boiled an egg. I've peeled a lot of. Um, <laughs> Jeannie did a cow and got cooked cow peas on Android. That's hilarious. But anyway, okay, so I have peeled lots of hard boiled eggs that my sister or my mother or somebody else, you know, have made. I have tried every way known to man to make eggs. The only other time I've been successful is popcorn Karen and I did make them in her instant pot. Um, and it and it turned out they turned out great. But you know what? I own four air fryers and I don't own an instant pot. So I'll just make them in the air fryer. Okay, so the egg, super simple, 260, 16 minutes, and then we're gonna put them in an ice bath for five minutes, and I'll show you what we're gonna use them for here in just a second. Okay, last week I went to Trader Joe's. So last week we had a Trader Joe's haul, um, and that was at the end of chat number 211. So if you missed the Trader Joe's haul, you can just go back to last week's chat and watch that. If you go to ifyouhaveanegg.com, um, we have the whole list. We have, sorry, well, I fiddle with my apron. If you go to ifyouhaveanegg.com and look at last week's um, post for Chat 211, we do have the Trader Joe's haul on there and it has everything that I got at Trader Joe's um, with the smart points. So when you pull that up, it has, so it's a Trader Joe, my Trader Joe's list that I got last week. And yes, my Christy, I'm a little bit obsessed with air fryers, just a tiny bit, a tiny bit. I even mentioned it during Sunday school this morning. So yeah, just maybe just a tiny bit. Um, but, but anyway, what was I even saying? Now, Christy, you know, you know you can't do that to me because you know you just distracted me. Anyway, that list from last week, it does have the smart points in blue, green, and purple. So anything that I got from Trader Joe's last week, you can go back to, uh, you're hilarious, you can go back to last week's chat on ifyouhaveanegg.com or on YouTube and watch it. 
But on If You Have an Egg, you can actually print it. If you go to ifyouhaveanegg.com, you can actually print that list. And again, it's on blue, green, and purple. So it shall tell you the serving size and blue, green, and purple. And yes, Orlando Debbie Squirrel. Ha <laughs> ha, y'all are hilarious. Okay, one of the things I got last week, though, is a family favorite. I mean, like, we love this, and I get this every single time I go to Trader Joe's. And I call it the wrong thing every single time. Every single time. I call it jalapeno artichoke dip every single time time and I call it that in all of my recipes too it is not called jalapeno artichoke dip okay so don't go to Trader Joe's and ask them for that they'll probably help you find it and yes you are hilarious Christy it's called artichoke and jalapeno dip so not jalapeno artichoke dip artichoke and jalapeno dip that's what it's called okay so I always get this one on there and what we make with it, like the first thing that we make with it every single time, oh, this is one point per tablespoon, one point per tablespoon or two points per two tablespoons. So the serving size is two tablespoons. What we make with it every single time I go and every single time I buy it um, only uses part of the container. So we always end up with this other part of the container that, you know, like what, you know, what are we gonna do with it? And hello, Sandy from Naperville. So. It's okay. She's late because her daughter's late. Sandy, so you're going to have to go back and listen to the first part of this chat because we had a question for you, but I don't have time to go back and ask it right now. But anyway, so the, so the Trader Joe's artichoke and jalapeno dip, what we make with it every single time I go to Trader Joe's is, our, is my jalapeno artichoke, it's actually jalapeno artichoke bacon cheesy ciabatta, I think is the name. The name of the recipe is like that long. It is so long, but it is basically um, Trader Joe's ciabatta sliced, um, and you put a smear of this on there, a smear of the artichoke and jalapeno dip on there, and then I uh, do um, my recipe uh, candied bacon, or you can just do regular bacon and crumble it up and put it on there, and then you put cheese on it, and then melt it, and you bake all that in the oven, or you can cook it in the air fryer, and it is absolutely absolutely one of my favorite things it's like 12 smart points for the whole thing but i don't care it's that delicious i'm gonna spend i don't want six smart points worth of it i don't even want eight i want all of it i want the whole thing of, of my portion so that's 12 smart points okay those recipes are already on if you have an egg.com so if you go and just search artichoke or jalapeno you'll be able to find that recipe okay so that's thing number one that we make Every single time I go to Trader Joe's and every single time I buy this, which is just about every single time I go to Trader Joe's. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little parched today. Karen and I did get to walk. And it was super warm outside today. So I'm a little bit parched. It's freezing again now, but it's a little bit it was a little bit warm earlier. Okay. But then what do you do with the rest of the container? Okay. I mean it's two smart points for two tablespoons. I'm willing to spend that on the jalapeno artichoke bacon cheesy ciabatta, whatever it's called. I'm willing to spend it on that. And it's absolutely delicious on that, but it leaves the rest of the container. And I only get enough ciabatta from Trader Joe's to make that one time. And then I use the rest of the ciabatta to make, and I think you can see them. I didn't mean to put them out, but I think they're right there. If you can see them right here, actually I'll just show you. I use the rest of the ciabatta bread to make ciabatta croutons to go in my to go in my soup because I also almost always buy the um, tomato feta soup from Trader Joe's. Um, but don't keep the ciabatta from Trader Joe's on your, you know, don't keep it for too long. It starts to turn green within just a few days. So you got to eat it fast. So since I've only purchased enough ciabatta to make this one time, I have the entire rest of this container left over. Now it's meant to be eaten as a dip. It's a it's a it's a point per tablespoon, and a tablespoon is not very much. So some thing, couple of things that I do um, with it instead of just eating it, and it's delicious as a dip. And if you are a civilian and you're this this and you're this big around, eat it, knock yourself out, go ahead and eat it all you want. But a couple of things that you can do though to use the rest of this container. You know and not feel like you've just blown your you know blown your smart point budget um one thing is this has got such a strong flavor to it that if you do want to use it as a dip you can make you can blend the artichoke and jalapeno dip you can blend this with some non-fat plain greek yogurt and it's still like a one-to-one -one ratio so you can double it so you can make like four 
tablespoons of that new dip. So you can make, you know, so, you, so you're gonna do two tablespoons of the artichoke and jalapeno dip, two tablespoons of non-fat plain Greek yogurt, mix that together really well, and it's gonna make four tablespoons for still only two smart points if you were on purple. Um, and it's delicious. It's still very, very flavorful. It's still very creamy, and um, you can use it on carrots. It, it is good on carrots, celery, um, sugar snap peas. It's pretty good on snow peas. I prefer sugar snap peas. Um, it's good on pretzels. It's good on the pretzel thins, you know, things like that. So that's a great way to extend that, you know, and kind of make that, you know, kind of make that last. Um, I have also used this in macaroni and cheese, believe it or not. So in macaroni and cheese, whether we're going to use whole wheat pasta noodles or if we're going to do um, like a spaghetti squash and use that as part of the noodles um, or some, I have not used it on any of the um, like zoodles, you know, like the zucchini noodles or the squash noodles or carrot noodles or anything like that. Um, I haven't tried it on that yet, but we have used this to make macaroni and cheese. So it makes, it's got just a little bit of heat to it. It's not bad. I don't think it's bad. I don't think the jalapeno in it is bad. Um, oh, wait, Loretta says mix that in my tuna instead of mayonnaise. Perfect. That is a perfect idea, Loretta. Perfect idea. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to try that next because I still have this much of this left. Um, but um, it's great like that. It's also great as a sandwich spread. So I um, had not thought about mixing it in the tuna instead of mayonnaise, but um, it's great as a sandwich spread. The, um, you know, just use, just spread it on your bread. And, it, and again, it goes farther if you mix it half and half or, you know, like tablespoon per tablespoon, you know, uh, it goes farther if you mix it with some non-fat plain Greek yogurt and then do that. Um, oh, and Loretta also says on rice cakes, that sounds delicious as well. Um, but if you do that and thin it out a little bit, and then put it on um, on a sandwich. So, you know, like a turkey sandwich or something like that. It's delicious like that as well. I have also put it in my secret recipe scrambled eggs. If you've never made my secret recipe scrambled eggs, you need to go do that like now, like right now. They are so fluffy, you're gonna pass out. I mean, you're really just gonna pass out and they're so stinking easy. Um, we could eat those all the time, but this is a great mix in um, for those. Um, yeah, so it's super awesome. Okay, what we're gonna make with it tonight, though? Let's see. I'm sorry, y'all are still having fun with the with the emoji, um, with the emoji tracking. Barbara says she clicked on champagne um, emoji on the app, and it gave her an item like pudding. That's pretty funny. That is pretty hilarious. Okay, but so this dip is extremely versatile. It is extremely versatile. Um, so again, sandwiches. You can use it as a sandwich spread. I'm going to slow down just a little bit. I'm talking super, super fast. Okay. You can use it as a sandwich spread. It goes farther if you double it. If you do, again, tablespoon per tablespoon, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, and the artichoke and jalapeno dip, do that. Um, tastes great in macaroni and cheese. Loretta swears by it on with tuna instead of mayonnaise. I think that is a great idea. That is an, actually, I, I think I'm probably going to try that not tomorrow. I'll probably try that Tuesday because I'll be here at work on Tuesday. That, let's just stop and think for a second. That's a great idea, Loretta. Hmm. So I think I've still got some one point um, Olay Extreme Wellness Tortillas. If you mix this with your tuna, and then spread it on an Olay Extreme Wellness tortilla, and then put some cheese, put some some lower, you know, some lower fat, some light shredded cheese on there, and heated that up and folded it over. Would that not make the most amazing tuna melt? Would that not be awesome? Yeah, I think that would be super good. Who thinks that would make like a super spicy, delicious tuna melt? I think that's yeah. I think that's an awesome idea. Okay, so. That's another good one. Um, you can make it into, you can spread it out a little bit, you know, in the dip. Um, and, you know, go ahead and mix it with the non-fat plain Greek yogurt. You can mix it with some fat-free um, sour cream. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. It's extremely versatile. It's extremely versatile. Oh, mashed potatoes. I forgot to mention those. Mashed potatoes. So, y'all know we talked about this last week. I buy the Trader Joe's frozen mashed potatoes. There's no reason to peel a potato ever again. If you have a Trader Joe's within two hours of you 
There is no reason to peel a potato ever again. The mashed potatoes are perfect. So you just get the frozen Trader Joe's mashed potatoes, cook them like normal, mix this in and do some, uh, add some non-fat plain Greek yogurt to it to kind of, you know, to creamy it up again. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious, absolutely delicious. And then the last thing before we make these is the um, uh, jalapeno artichoke bacon cheesy ciabatta. I don't know, I'm serious, the name is about that long. It is the most delicious thing ever. I mean, it's the most delicious thing you will ever, ever, ever put in your mouth. And I pair it with the Trader Joe's, the tricolor um, cauliflower that we looked at last week. I pair it with that. Okay, so enough about talking. Let's do some doing. So we have three minutes left on this batch of eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and use the eggs that I had already the eggs that I had already made. Oh, and a, okay, a couple of you asked what was in my water this week. So it looks funny it looks blue it should look blue so this is just spring water and i did two pumps of mermaid of the skinny syrups where are they skinny syrups mermaid a splash of mango and a splash of coconut because it was a little bit warm today and it tastes like i'm in the tropics okay i want to show you the difference real quick before i show you how to make these i want to show you the difference in this so I'm making hard boiled eggs in the air fryer, 260 degrees for 16 minutes, and then we're gonna put them in an ice bath for five minutes. So again, never successfully did hard boiled eggs. This one is my hard boiled egg. Look how pretty that is. Whoop, good, Barbara got her syrups yesterday. So that's my hard boiled egg. You see how pretty it is? This is a hard boiled egg that we bought in a moment of desperation here in the showroom. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it is chunked up. Like, that's awful. It is absolutely chunked up. Okay, if you make your hard boiled eggs in the air fryer though, um, oh, Debbie knows how to make her own mashed potato pucks and she's got them in her, in her freezer right now. Awesome. Okay, so if you do your eggs in the air fryer, look how easy these peel. These are like so easy. This is getting ready to start coming off in huge chunks here. This is so easy, so easy. And I know some people put these in um, like a jar with water and shake them. And, uh, and the, the shaking, you know, kind of breaks that membrane and it makes them peel really easy too. And then it just literally falls off. But look how easy, look how easy that came off. So these are beautiful, 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 hard boiled eggs so easy so easy and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in half and you can keep hard boiled eggs in the refrigerator for several days um, without using them so look how pretty those are on the inside they're perfect they're absolutely perfect but I'm only gonna do three and I yes I'm gonna do the kind of chunked up one um, that I again bought in a moment of desperation I just needed some hard boiled eggs and actually they're not even okay hold on I'm about to show you how to do this real quick when the time is up when the time is up on your eggs do not pick them up please don't just grab them they're gonna be super hot they're gonna be 260 degrees okay you're gonna scorch your little hand and you don't need this much water this is just what I was using but use something like I don't even know what kind of a little basket thing this is, but it's perfect for getting them out. And you're just going to dump them into the ice bath. And you're going to leave them in there for about, oh, yeah, and it does match the eggs on my apron. Carol's right. So, yeah, so you're just going to leave them in there for at least five minutes. But longer than five minutes is okay. It's not going to hurt anything for them to be in there longer than five minutes. Okay, so anyway, that's how you make the hard boiled eggs. But look at the difference in the color. So this is my air fryer hard boiled egg. This is the store hard boiled egg. Can you see that? Mine's much prettier. Okay, so we're gonna do three hard boiled eggs. I'm gonna show you how easy the yolk comes out of mine too. So we're just gonna do three so that I don't keep you all here all night. We've got 
actually, we, whoop, we might actually end like a moment or two early. Okay, so these are my eggs out of the air fryer. And look, I just squeezed it. The yolk went right in the bowl. Right in the bowl. Here's another one of mine. Squeezed it. Yolk went right in the bowl. Didn't have to prod it or poke it or anything else. Here's one of the store-bought eggs. Eh, that one worked pretty well. But it's just so pale. It's so pale on the outside of it. It's so chopped up. And then here's the other one. And then the last two of mine. And again, in case you came in late, the hard-boiled eggs, it's better if they're about a week or so old. Also, forgot to mention, they need to be room temperature. Yeah, so don't take them straight out of the refrigerator. If they're room temperature before you start, that's when they um, pop out of the white so easily. Okay, so we're just going to do three. And... We are going to go ahead and smush those up. I'm sure that's not the technical term for it, but we are going to smush those egg yolks up. And this is yummy. I promise everybody in your family, unless they just really don't like spicy things, everybody in your family is going to love these. Love, love, love these. And they're so easy. And I make these, so like I'm making six hard-boiled egg halves. So that's six halves of hard boiled eggs and um or three eggs you know three whole eggs um, and that's what i'm going to be eating for a couple of days for lunch this week except i think i am going to make that tuna melt that uh loretta inspired me accidentally to make okay so i'm going to use this same fork so i'm just going to use my swedish wet it cloth that you can also get here at casey kitchen center to wipe to wipe that off and I'm obsessed with this fork. So this fork came with the chapel here at Casey Kitchen Center and it only has three tines. I don't know why. Why does it only have three tines? Somebody please explain that to me, but I'm obsessed with it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take, that is about two tablespoons. That is about two tablespoons of the artichoke and jalapeno dip. I almost called it jalapeno artichoke dip. Um, that's about two tablespoons of that. And I am just going to mix it with the egg whites. I mean, sorry, the egg yolks. And if you want to add any seasonings to this, you can. But this is really, it's really just delicious on its own. And if you wanted to get super fancy, you know, you could do this with a mixer, with a hand mixer or something like that to make them extra creamy. Um, you could put them back in your eggs with something, you know, use some fa fancy way. Bye, Alicia. Some fancy way to get them back in your eggs. But I just like the super simple, you know, super simple three-tined fork way. Oh, and Sandra says it's just that way. She has a whole set like that. I don't know. Maybe I've never seen a three-tined fork, but it just fascinates me. So I end up using it a lot. Just, I don't know, just because it fast, because it fascinates me. Okay, so after you do that, you're just going to put your egg yolk with the jalapeno artichoke dip. That's not what it's called. It's called artichoke and jalapeno dip. You're going to put that back into your eggs. And right now, my sister is cringing somewhere because she pipes like, like you would do cookie icing or whatever. She pipes the filling back into her egg yolks. So she can just get over it. Okay, and if you really, really like jalapenos, like if you really like hot stuff, um, this is excellent with a few extra dices of jalapeno. So if you buy diced jalapeno, this is really good with a few extra. Um, okay, Jean says it's a fish fork. Hmm, okay, but my sister does this with, um, anyway, she uses a piping bag. Um, oh, what I was saying about the jalapenos though, if you like your stuff super, super hot, this is really good with um, the dice. You can get diced jalapenos in a jar. And it's really good with some of the diced jalapenos put on top. Because John and I do like things pretty spicy. Okay. So here we go. Okay, that is just about right. And again, the Swedish dishcloths, 
If you don't already have one of these, you've got to go get one. So like this, I'll just throw it in the dishwasher when I leave tonight. Um, we do have these at caseykitchencenter.com. And oh, by the way, in case I didn't already say it like 15 times, the um, holiday ones, the Christmas and fall ones are 25% off with no, you don't have to have any coupon code. They're just 25% off. Okay, so, and to sanitize this, because I just rubbed egg yolk or egg, yeah, egg yolk all over it. Gonna throw it in the dishwasher. Okay, so look how pretty these are. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I probably could have picked a different color plate for this, but let me go ahead and try one of them for you, even though I know what these taste like because we eat these all the time. Okay, and Cheryl does hers with a plastic bag and snip the corner. See, that's so my sister. That is so my sister. It's just, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it before I can make it pretty. So let me try it for you. <laughs> yeah, see, I already know what they taste like. So I'm cheating. I'm cheating because they are absolutely delicious. I already know what they taste like. If you like um, semi-spicy things, you're probably going to want to just leave them, um, you know, like it is the three eggs with about two tablespoons of the artichoke and jalapeno dip. If you like things a lot spicier, like John and I like things super hot, super good. Oh, it would be really good with like a candied jalapeno on top. Hmm. I wonder if I can make, okay, I'm sorry, I just total sidetrack. I wonder if I can make candied jalapenos in my chew a me that I'm making sauerkraut in right now. Hmm, that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, jalapenos on top, diced jalapenos, a candied jalapeno would be awesome. But I hope you all um, learned a few new things that you can do with the leftovers of something that you got for something else. So the artichoke and jalapeno dip, highly recommend it. It's a really good one. One point per tablespoon. If you don't mix it with anything else, you can make lots of things with it. And I'm definitely going to be trying that. Um, definitely going to be trying that tuna melt. I think it's going to be awesome. But, shoo, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for the day. We've had a great and exciting weekend finding out about pistachio um, heading this way in October. And if you missed the first part of this, you're going to have to go back and watch it to find out who pistachio is. But Y'all have a great week. I hope you have so much fun doing your homework, doing your hashtag emoji tracking, emoji track. I hope you have so much fun with that because it sounds like y'all are already having a blast. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, I pointed the wrong, I've been pointing the wrong direction. I don't remember which way I'm supposed to be pointing, but we did figure it out I'm pointing the wrong direction. But just go ahead and go ahead and let the next video roll over. And then go ahead and click subscribe. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Please hit subscribe. And if you would like any of our cool merch, you can go over here and go ahead um, and click on um, Spreadshirt and it will take you there. But I so appreciate, appreciate you all being here again this week. I will see you next week. Um, and I hope you all have a good one and do your homework. Do your homework. Oh, oh, we've been doing some short videos on Instagram. So if you follow us on Instagram, go ahead and watch those on IGTV. But you all have an amazing week and I will see you next time.